Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Joel and today we're going to be talking about raising money on a safe and dilution risk. And we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of an early stage investor and a startup founder. And the reason why this is important is because every time you raise money, you have to issue new shares. And by issuing new shares, you're essentially taking the pie of shares that you already have and increasing it. And the risk of that is that the sliver of shares that you have get smaller and smaller and smaller in proportion to the total amount of shares. So you really want to be intentional and deliberate with your startup financing and keeping in mind that down the road you may own less percentage of the company than you own today. So I created a spreadsheet that will help you determine what that number might look like in the future so you can make smarter decisions. The first thing we're going to do is get a lay of the land and determine what the initial structure of the company looks like. How many shares do the founders have? Do they issue options? Moreover, what do their safe deals look like? And what does the proposed Series A look like? Next, we're going to take those safe deals and we're going to convert them into preferred shares in the company. Third, we're going to create an option pool based on what the Series A investors have required the founders do with the Series A option pool. Last, once the option pool is created, we can ensure that the Series A investors own the specific percentage of the company that they purchased and then figure out how much dilution the other shareholders have experienced, giving us the final cap table. The first thing that we need to look at, though, is how many shares did the founders start with at inception and did they create an option pool? In this case, I've given 5 million shares to the founders and I didn't actually create an option pool just yet. Now let's talk about the money the company has raised on a safe. And as you may know, a company can raise as many or as few safes as they would like. The terms of those safes can be really different, but in this case, I've actually kind of condensed those uh, options and turned it into a very standard safe agreement, which is a safe with a valuation cap and a discount. So the company first starts by raising $400,000 at a $5 million valuation cap with a 20% discount, giving those investors pro rata rights on future rounds. The next round is actually a $3.5 million round, raised at a $15 million valuation cap that I broke into two different investments. And the reason why I did this is because I want to give early stage investors the opportunity to see what their dilution risk might be like. In this case, it's I broke it down into a $15,000 investment. So if those are the types of bets that you make, you'll be able to kind of see what that means for you. What are the implications? And then, of course, there's a 20% discount, and I did include pro rata shares on the, uh, on the contract. If you would like to change any of these stats, you may. Um, for pro rata, you just change it from a Y to an N if there are not pro rata rights included. Now we need to talk about the economics of the Series A investment because this has implications on the safe investments that you've done in the past and the share price at which those safe investments um, will convert from safe into preferred shares. So the first thing we need to take a look at is we need to take a look at how much money was raised. We're saying this is a $12 million Series A round. The lead investor is contributing $6 million. It has a pre-money valuation of $48 million, giving it a post-money valuation of $60 million, and the investors have told the company that they are required to create a 10% option pool. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to determine how these safe investments convert into preferred shares. In order to do this, we need to uh, determine how many shares need to be issued or created in order to get these people into the cap table. So what we do is we first take the total number of initial shares, 5 million, and we divide by one minus the total percent of the business that we sold in the safe, which is 31.33%. That gives us 7.28 million total shares. And in order to determine how much each safe holder owns or how many shares they have, we then multiply by the percentage of ownership of each specific safe holder. So for example, safe holder one has 8%. So we multiply by 8% there to determine that he gets 582,524 shares. And then you keep going down the line with each safe investor. Now, this 
safe investment also came with a discount. So we need to determine which is more advantageous for the safe holder to convert at the valuation cap or to convert at the A price with a discount. We don't yet actually know what the price per share of the Series A is, so let's hold off on this now and we'll assume that the valuation cap is where we're going to be converting these shares. Here's a quick tip though. If the safe cap is lower than the post money valuation with the discount applied, then you're going to convert at the safe terms. If the post money valuation with the discount applied is lower than the value cap of the safe, then you're going to convert at the series A terms. Now that we have this figured out, we can take a look at the interim cap table. So the founders have 5 million shares. The safe holders have a varying number of shares, which brings us to, again, to 7.28 million shares. And you can take a look at the breakdown. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to determine how many shares are we going to create for the series A and how much are those shares going to cost? And that's a tricky problem because the more shares you create, the less those shares are worth and vice versa. And the problem is if you play with those two levers, the percentage ownership that each individual in the company has fluctuates greatly. Now what we need to do is we need to determine how do we get these two levers, the cost per share and the number of shares to be set in a way where the series A investment is 20% of the company. Again, it's a $12 million investment for a $60 million post money valuation. Once we get the shares and the number of shares set into place so that the Series A investment is worth 20% of the company, that's when we'll be able to take a look at the final cap table and determine who owns what and how much have the founders and safe investors been diluted. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to determine how many shares we do we need to create for the Series A and how many do we need to create for the new option pool. Remember, we have to create an option pool. It's a requirement of the Series A. So in order to determine how many Series A shares we need to create, we're going to take the amount raised, $12 million, and we're going to divide it by the cost per share estimate. We're still working to figure that out. We'll get to it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many shares are the safe investors going to get uh, for exercising their pro rata rights. And in order to determine what that number is, you essentially take the percentage ownership that the safe owner has. For example, safe owner one has 8% ownership of the company. And you multiply that 0.08 by the total number of shares we're creating in the Series A. You do that for each safe investor who's exercising their pro rata rights. From there, you're able to determine what the shares available for the new Series A investors are. And you simply take the total number of Series A shares and you subtract it by the number of shares that are being allocated for the pro rata rights. From there, you can start to think about the number of options that you need to create. Essentially, you know that you have the shares post the safe conversion, and then you have the shares post the Series A. And from here, we need to create options that, uh, in this case, it's 10% um, that employees in the future can purchase so that they can share in the upside of the company. And in order to determine what this number is, you take the total shares, not including unallocated options, you divide it by one minus, in this case, 10%, or whatever percentage you allocate to options, and then you subtract out any existing options that have yet to be allocated. In this case, there aren't any. So you know that you need to create that many number of options. And then finally, you take those two numbers together, total number of shares after the Series A, total number of options, add them together, and that gives you the number of fully diluted shares. Now that we know the number of fully diluted shares, all we have to do is play with the estimated cost per share in order to get the total number of Series A shares to equal 20% of the company. As you play with this number, you'll see lots of things change. But what we need to do is we need to find a perfect number to get us to about 20% ownership. You may be wondering, where do I start my estimates for the cost per share of the Series A? One trick that I learned from a YouTube channel called Startup SOS is that you can take the pre-money valuation and divide it by the number of shares after the safe conversion. That gives you a good estimate of about where the cost per share of the Series A price is going to be. 
You know it's going to be lower than the number that you get with that estimator, but you at least have a starting point. In this case, we've determined that a cost per share of $5.75 gets us incredibly close to 20% ownership. And once you have that number, you'll be able to start to look at the final cap table. This is the end result and all the way at the end of the sheet. And you realize that the founders have just 48% of the company and you can take a look at how the varying participants from the Series A investors to the new A investors, the safe investors, how have they been diluted? How much do they own? And you can start to see how important it is to consider dilution. Because for investors, the last thing that we want is for founders to get so diluted that they don't even care about the business anymore. And vice versa, the last thing that you want is investors to get so diluted where they start to become resentful. So you really need to think about how much money you really need to raise and be considerate of all participants to make sure that you're crossing the finish line together and everyone's really happy. It's a really hard thing to do, but if you are looking down the road and you're playing with spreadsheets like this, you'll be able to make uh, smarter decisions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the question box below. Thanks. Have a good night.